it projects or predicts uh, a deflation to happen. Uh, we have uh, monitored and discussed very closely the actions by the European Central Bank and uh, the quantitative easing they have started to engage in. And in our assessment, the Council's assessment, um, if there were deflationary tendencies actually to emerge, then there would be enough ammunition in the arsenal of the ECB in order to counter that. Of course, there are some countries within the Eurozone that are already in deflation, which is clearly being ignored by that. To uh, discuss that further, I'm joined now by Naeem Aslam, Chief Market Analyst at Avatrade. Um, we've got this inflation print coming out today, um, and you've also got GDP figures coming out later this week. People are very worried about what German GDP is going to be. If we can talk about inflation first, um, where are we heading for the Eurozone? Thanks for having me, Javier. I think it's still going to be a negative reading, and that is quite worrying. Yes, as you were saying, that you know there could be further measures coming up. But Maggie Draghi, you know, every time he wants to do something, he gets stopped by the Germans. Now, one important thing that I do wanted to point out is that I was looking at the ECB balance sheet, and you know, yet they are saying they are expanding the balance sheet, but the balance sheet is not actually expanding; it is standing at 2.03 trillion. And if it falls under 2 trillion, that is a headline generator. So basically, what the banks are doing, ECB is going on the market and is issuing loans to these banks but in fact the banks are actually giving back to the ECB as well and that amount is more what ECB is actually buying on the market so that is going to create a bit of an inflation dilemma and then ECB uh, Draghi wants to do a little bit more but whether Germans will allow that that's a different question. Of course we're still to see the benefits of some of the ABS and the covered bonds programs Absolutely. we know the Teltros have been going out quite slowly um, the balance sheet is set to expand by uh, another billion to, uh, well, another trillion rather, to three trillion. A billion. billion would be just a flash in the pan, wouldn't it? Um, talk to me about German GDP da data because clearly that is the powerhouse of Europe and the fact that it's, it's been stalling has been a major concern for the Eurozone. I completely agree with you. My biggest concern with Germany is that there's a structural changes going on within Germany. Basically, the cost of producing goods have also actually gone up because, you know, yes, we have commodity prices falling on one end, but the natural gas prices within Germany of producing goods, it's gone up. So what Germany really needs to do is it needs to improve its infrastructure, do more spending within the country so that we can see a much better improved growth within Germany. Well, of course, power is a big question because yeah. they were complaining about power prices, but this Germany is a country that banned nuclear power. And when you look at situations where BMW is moving factories to the US because it has an 80% yes. cheaper energy bill, you've got to know that something is wrong. Absolutely. I mean, that is one of the main reasons. And this is my concern with Germany. If Sorry. they are not going to address this problem and they're bringing more sanctions on Russia because the noise is getting bigger and bigger within Europe and Germany is right on the forefront of that. They wanted to put more restrictions, more sanctions on Russia what's going to happen with the natural gas eventually that would go up and then in China that thing is going to go much more lower we still do not know what the price is so it, it is something that Angela Merkel has to address she needs to do a lot more in terms of her investment within the country and let our friend Draghi go Naeem, good to see you, sir. Uh, let's talk about the yen. Does it continue to look like a sell despite all the political noise coming out of Tokyo right now? I, I, I certainly agree. I mean, it is going to go down. The only thing that when I'm not buying yen is against gold, let's just say that. I mean, that is the, <laughs> that is the only trade that we will not do it. But yen, it has a much... Uh, room towards the downside and we have a target of we, we think that the yen could go towards 118 220 even even though as that is a very bold call but we do think that is a potential for yen for the next quarter uh, in 2015. Year, 118 120 by uh, the end of the year or sooner? Uh, no by by the first quarter of 2015. All right very quickly gold you describe yourself as defiantly bullish in the long term. Why? 
the stars are lining up, Sri. Three, three things. 2017, we have elections coming up in Germany and in France. We have a lot of unstable uh, geopolitical situation in, in, the, in the entire world. And then, secondly, yes, U.S. would be increasing the interest okay. rates, uh, you know, uh, hopefully soon. But uh, that is the kind of a situation that we are looking at. But if they do, the economy within the two years would be at the point where the equity market would be a lot more higher and the earnings will not be able to sustain so that is a lot more volatility for the market and that is the reason that we think that gold in the longer term is a definitely buy and it is certainly something that everyone should have within their portfolio. And then just a final one on the Bank of England. Yesterday, uh, Carney seemed to be rubber stamping market opinion that we're not going to get a rate hike now till October. It's been pushed out by nine months. Is it going to be the second move? Are you going to see the Fed tightening policy before the Bank of England? Well, first of all, I did laugh on your joke yesterday as well. That was absolutely hilarious and everyone was just laughing. That was a very good job on you. Uh, to answer your question, uh, yes, certainly. We think there's a new mandate within the Bank of England. Now, they are going to look at the Eurozone and the spillover effects are impacting the economy. So do not, we are not expecting the Bank of England to be the first bank to raise their interest rates. It's a major shift there. Uh, we all thought, I think, the Bank of England would be first mover. Well, thank you very much, Naeem Aslam from Avtrade. Now, still to come on Capital Connection, what mysteries will be uncovered as mankind gets its first chance to